Hi, in this video I have the Ranger 2 indoor smart security camera. I've unboxed it. In the box you'll get your USB cable. The USB cable fits at the back here. It is a micro USB. If you have a power over Ethernet switch, unfortunately connecting directly to a power over Ethernet switch will not power the device. You still have to use the cable and the power supply to power the unit. So it comes with this 5 watt AC adapter. And then over here, I've got the mounting screws and the clip. What happens here is if I flip this upside down, I can screw this into a wall, onto a ceiling, and then I twist this like that. It goes underneath the two little flanges there, and then this can be wall mounted. Here's the template for drilling your holes, and there are the wall plugs and screws. The quick start manual and the regulatory guide are also included, and now I'll show you how to set it up. Right, so I now plug it in. Once it is plugged in, a little red LED is on the top here. It is now lit. And if you leave it for a few seconds, it does a look around. It rotates a few times and the head here rotates up and down. This is the starting sequence. As you can see, the head is rotating up, down. Right, so I'm going to power it down and I'm just going to slide this up and over there there's space for where I can insert my data card. The card must face down and I just slide the card in here. Now I can power it up again. Now in order to set this up I need to use my smartphone. I've downloaded the app. There you can see IMO Lite. If I open the app Right, in order to get started, if I've already got an account, I can put my phone or email and my password. But in this case, I do not have one, so I'm going to say sign up. I now need to decide which country I'm in, keeping in mind that it only allows you to choose your country once. Now it asks me to confirm this. Now it requires some login credentials. Right, once I've put in my email address and I've chosen a password, repeat the password, accept the conditions, press next. Now it will send an email to you and you'll need to put the verification code into the field over here in order to continue the setup. Right, I've put my verification code in and now I can go to the next screen. Now it's asking if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. I'm going to say not now. Right, now what I want to do is I want to link the camera to my profile. So I've got a device center. I say plus. And now I'm going to scan with a QR code or if you want to you can just put the serial number in manually. At the bottom of the unit there is a QR code which can be scanned. Right, it has now located the unit because I scanned the bottom of the unit, the QR code, and I can say next. Right, now it says there must be a green LED flashing on the front of the unit. Right, so on the front of the unit it is powered on and a green LED is flashing. Right now it's confirming a code and I just say yes, connect, it's found the unit. Right now it's looking for SSIDs in the nearby area. Right, I'm now going to put in my password for the nearby Wi-Fi. Right, now what is happening is the device is connecting to the cloud. Right, so I've connected to the device there and just some notes about connecting to it. If you put in the wrong password for your Wi-Fi, it kind of gets stuck in a loop. What I recommend you do is restart your camera so you can unplug it or go through the whole motion again but i definitely recommend a full restart right once you've connected to your unit on the top here you've got an icon for the memory card then a cloud uh, it's picking up an alarm i'll go through that now and then you've got two little dots there the two little dots allow you to do the settings so when i press the two little dots it says manage settings or videos share device and device details so i'll go to manage settings now on the top here it's got notifications. If an alarm condition takes place, one of the notification is pushed through to your phone here. It says push notification thumbnail so even the picture will come through and then you can make the device offline. Now over here this is the live stream to the camera. So say for example I go like that. It is now showing me my live stream. So over here I bring the camera. You can see that this is actually, no, it's not quite real time but it is quite close and you've got some settings that you can adjust over here. For example, I can pause or I can play. So now it is playing. If you don't want the stream, you can just stop it. Uh, I've got over here, if you've got other devices, so you can see I've got, can have a video wall. If I add other devices, maybe I've got other ranges. 
Now there is the video quality. You can also set it to SD, but I have it at the moment in high definition. All right, so there's an example of the push notification with the thumbnail. Maybe you don't want the thumbnail, then you can switch it off. Now over here, you've got an audio option. So if I press the audio, the microphone on, what happens is on the front of the unit, there's actually a microphone. So just over there, there's a microphone. I can actually hear myself in the speaker of my phone. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually talking directly into the microphone hole on the Ranger 2. And then you are hearing that through the speaker here on my phone. So I can switch the audio off. So that means if people are sitting in the room and the Ranger is there in the room with them, you can hear the conversation. You can also take a snapshot. So there we go. I've taken a snapshot of whatever the camera is seeing. You can control the camera. For example, if I want to go further down there, you can see. And if I go to the side, I'm now scanning here. And if I go to the other side, I'm panning to the other side. There's obviously a bit of a delay. And over here, I've got microphone. I'm not going to turn it on because it's just going to have uh, feedback. But what happens is at the back of the unit, so just over there is a speaker. So if I press the mic on, then I can talk through the microphone of my phone and it will come out over here. The quality is okay. You people can hear it if, uh, if they're in the room. I will do a test. Right, so I'm just going to do an audio test quickly. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now just note, if I do put the speak on, so that means that the audio would come through there. If I speak, it does shut off the return audio. So what I mean by that is it's not full duplex. You're either talking or you're listening, but you can't do both at the same time. Okay, if you want to record what it is that uh, the camera is seeing, you just press the record button and now it is going to record whatever is in front of the unit. Right, if you want to see the full screen, I just go like that and it takes me to the full screen. Right, you're just seeing my desk, there's my screens and um, one can note that it's got quite a wide angle and that's why uh, you're seeing quite a lot of curvature. So you will be able to see quite a lot of the room if the camera is installed in a corner, for example. Now, obviously I can pan, there we go, I'm panning and uh, I can pan to the side and I can obviously tilt. Now, if you have more devices, they'll be added over here. So if I just want to change the settings on the device, now this is quite unique. If I go to the settings, it's the top corner here is like a gear. Now, very important is uh, the time zone. Now, notice you can change the time zone for each one of your cameras. So for example, over here, I can say more, and then it says here time zone. Now, very important to have the correct time zone. Otherwise, your recordings, your date and timestamp will be incorrect. So you can select the region. So I set my time zone and uh, I've set mine and I've just said save. Now over here, there are more settings. For example, you can flip the image, you can set the date format. And then over here, it's asking you if you want the device beep and status LED. If you want it to be more covert, you can obviously toggle that off or you can toggle that on. The local storage, you can set up the uh, video quality, whether it must store video here. So yes, I have it. And the type of video, I've set it for high definition. There's only standard definition and high definition. And then you can also have the schedule recording and you can even set intervals or periods for when you want it to record. You can set the days, you can add a period. Maybe you want it to have a fixed recording, not just a motion recording for a certain amount of hours in the day. Obviously, it will use a lot more of your memory card. Now, something worth noting is it's got this motion recording and it's got this detection. So if I go to detection, here's the motion recording and then it even has human detection. I have played around with the human detection, but I, I can say with confidence that this is not very accurate. Yes, if somebody walks in the room, it will detect it and say human detection. But also if there's a light change, what I mean by that is if someone switches on a light or switches off a light or if the sun, if a tree is moving and it casts a shadow, it will also say human detection. Right, the smart tracking, what it does is it's supposed to follow you or follow the motion. So it tracks a moving object. I'll still demonstrate that. And then general activity uh, zone is asking you where in the field of view is considered an alarm condition. So this is normally how cameras are set. You could say, I want to, uh, this section here, maybe there's a lot of movement. Maybe if this was outside and there was a tree there, you could cancel this whole section here then the uh, recorder, the video recorder will, will not activate for any motion over here. Obviously you would have to save it. I'm not saving it because I'm leaving mine to the default. 
right, if I want to see footage that has already been recorded, I press the two dots there and it says they're all videos. So I can go to all videos. It's asking me if I want to go to the cloud or to the device. Now note that if you do want to record to the cloud, which is great, but you will have to pay a membership fee uh, per month. So if I go to the card, because I have the SD card installed in there, then it's going to show me all the recordings and then here you've got the date so you can set the calendar. Now I've only been using this for the day, so there it's only showing me there's recordings on the 3rd of November. So over here are all my recordings and, uh, and this is based on the settings, the motion settings, the zone and the type of alarm settings that you would set up on your unit. Right, then you've got audio recording. I like to have that on so when it records, it also records the audio. It's not just the video. So if you don't want the audio recorded with the video, then you'd switch that off. Now, if I want to have a look at the type of recording here, it says audio be notified. Now, here is an abnormal sound alarm. I'm going to switch that off. What that does is if there is some noise or some loud talking, then it knows to record and actually give you an alarm. And you can even set the loudness of that abnormal sound. So you can set it at 90 decibels, for example. The only alarm for abnormal sound if that is on. I'm going to switch that off. It can be a nuisance. Right, and here's the cloud section. And obviously, if you do want to use the cloud service, which is great, it'll automatically upload to the cloud, then you will have to subscribe. And there is a cost involved. For example, if I say uh, subscribe, there's the option. You look you're looking at $3 per month or $30 uh, per year. Now, all your notifications are viewed there. There you can see over here, it's motion detect. You can see all my uh, notifications are here and it gives it in a nice menu. Now, if you want to go to the global settings, I press the person here. Now, over here, it says tool. Now, this is quite interesting because it says LAN live. And what it does is it now searches my LAN for other cameras. These happen to be DAWA cameras and there's great compatibility between the DAWA and the IMO system. So say for example, I tap on that, it's now taken me to the camera and all it wants is the password. So if I put in the password, this is a camera on my network and uh, what it's doing is uh, allowing me to actually have some control and uh, allowing me to take pictures and even to record what is streaming over here. So now I can actually capture the main stream. So this means there's uh, compatibility here in terms of cameras that may be on your network. I can only comment about the DAWA cameras because this is a DAWA camera. So it's allowing me to stream other cameras and even interrogate recorded footage. But that recorded footage would have to be on an SD card of that camera. It can't go from the camera to the NVR. It can only go to the camera. Then you can add Alexa and Google Home and you can interface that. Uh, but I'm not going to show that. Now over here, when I'm back at the menu, it says camera shielding. What I do is if I press it on, notice the camera has just hidden itself. So there what has happened is it's kind of blocked it. Maybe it's for privacy. So if I switch camera shielding off now, you'll see that this thing has moved. Now this unit is not very heavy. As you can see, it's only 220 grams. And one of my problems with this unit is it doesn't have a battery inside. So the minute you unplug it, boom. That's it, it's finished. So there's no battery, can't last for another five minutes or so. If it just had a little lithium battery inside, just to even give it five or 10 minutes, that would be very useful anyway. Right, if you'd like to review the footage that's on the SD card, I suggest you download Dawa Toolbox. Here is the address, straight from Dawa Wiki. So once you have the toolbox open, uh, you'll need to install smart player which i've done and then i press open and here is the smart player and then these are the files what i did is i just say add and then uh, it will play that particular file so for example this is the file in question and if i double click on it there it is so now i'm going to show you the file just keeping in mind that uh, as the camera rotates, it makes quite a loud noise. So you will be hearing some of that noise when I play back the video. Right, so I'm walking over here and uh, I'm going to actually walk across the office.
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick something up from the floor and see if it can find me on the floor here. Okay, so here on the floor, I'm sort of in the view, but it is maintaining the uh, horizontal plane. It's not going that far down. And if I go quite close to the camera and then bend down. Right, so I'm pretty close to the camera. And now I'm going to go down and see what happens. Okay, so it seems quite good for tracking large large bodies or people walking across an office let's see across a, a room yeah and now i'm going out of the field of view and it's still tracking me and if i stay still for a while uh, it actually goes and pans the room there we go now this is quite a well lit office if i switch off the light right the light is off and still able to track me it has adapted for the light but obviously the resolution has gotten a bit worse now all right, so just some notes. Very important that once you set your unit up, you make sure that the lens is where the uh, title here is because if you leave it facing the other way, when you switch it on, it goes back to that resting position. So for best field of view, make sure that the lens is facing the middle of your room so that when it pans, it pans from the center and then it tends to go back to this point when it cannot find anything in the room. So overall, the unit works pretty well. The software interface on the cell phone is a little bit quirky. Uh, it's quite hard to press the two little buttons but it does do what it's supposed to do. And thanks for watching. Cheers.